Hello there. Welcome to this video. This is the second part of the teaching about whether everlasting life proves everlasting punishment or not. The first part was done a short while ago and it will be linked in the comments down below if you want to see that uh, along with some other videos. The scripture we were looking at really was Matthew 25 verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now if you're going to understand this, we've got to look at a few definitions. I've got a couple of definitions which you may or may not agree with. The first one is, Eternal means without beginning or end, always existing, lasting forever. Everlasting means lasting forever, an indefinitely long period of time, never ending or a very long time. It seems to me the difference between these two is simply that with everlasting, it doesn't necessarily mean it's eternal. Eternal means doesn't have a beginning, as far as we know. But everlasting can have a beginning, and then from there on, it doesn't have an end. The Greek word translated everlasting or eternal is the Greek word ionios. And it's an adjective, and in order to understand this, we have to go back and look at where it comes from. It comes from the noun I own. And I've already uh, done a video on this earlier, and it's linked in the description, where I've gone through and examined a number of places where it occurs to find out exactly what this word I own means. And then we go on now and we do the actual adjective itself. In that video, I described I own like this. I own is a period of time, the longest that the context will allow. It has a beginning unless it refers to God and may or may not have an end. Now I want to give you a couple of definitions of an adjective, one from a Greek grammar book and another one from the Oxford Popular English Dictionary. This is a quote from Intermediate New Testament Greek by Richard A. Young on page 80. An adjective is a word used to modify a noun or other substantive. It will agree with the noun it modifies in gender, number and case. Quote from the Oxford Popular English Dictionary. A word indicating an attribute used to describe or modify a noun. Now, an example of an adjective is this. If I were to say to you, I saw a really big one, what, what would you think about? A big what? Well, if I, if I said I saw a big ant, you would think in your mind of something really relatively very small. If I said I saw a big mountain, that would give you in your mind a picture of something extremely big. It's the same word, big. That's an adjective. And this is why we have to look at the word that it's used with. And in these scriptures now that I'm going to give you, I'm going to look at the words that it's used with in order to determine what the adjective Ionios means in that place. And the first one I'm going to look at is when it refers to God. Romans 16:26. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Literally, eternal God. I own you, Theo. Genitive case in the Greek. The King James translates everlasting God. The New King James everlasting God, and Young's literal translates age during God. 
Now, God, as far as we know, doesn't have a beginning and doesn't have an end. And that was our definition of eternal when I started off. So I'm going to give it the word eternal in this place. Now let's go and take a look at the Holy Spirit and see what it says about that. Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now, I've translated eternal Spirit. If you believe that the Spirit referred to here is the Spirit of God, and God is a Spirit, uh, then it has to be eternal, the same as God does. Literally, spirit eternal, panumatos, ionio, genitive case. King James translates eternal spirit, New King James eternal spirit, Young's literal, age during spirit. Now let's go and take a look at a, a word that's very important for this analysis, and it's the word life. In the Greek, it's the word zoe. It is uh, the one that we use for everlasting life, and the Strong's number of it is 2222 if you want to look it up. Matthew 19 16. And behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Literal, life eternal. Greek is zoein, ionion. Accusative case. King James translates eternal life. New King James eternal life. Young's literal life age during. Now I've translated this eternal life because I believe it to be the life of God. In other words, as God is eternal, so his life has got to be eternal. Look at this scripture. Ephesians 4, 18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart. The life of God, the Zoe of God, that's what it is. And so this is eternal in my book. Look at another example. And we go to Matthew nineteen twenty nine. And everyone who has forsaken houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit eternal life. This is the same word again, zoe. Literally, life eternal, zoen, ionion, accusative case. King James translates everlasting life, New King James everlasting life, Young's literal translates life age during. Mark 10.30 is the next one. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brothers, sisters and mothers, and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. Literally, life eternal, Greek, zoen, ionion, accusative case. King James translates eternal life, New King James translates eternal life, Young's literal life is during. Now in the previous verse we read, they translated everlasting life, both of them, New King James and King James. Here they've translated eternal life. You see a difference? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Literally, life eternal, zoin, ionion in the Greek, accusative case. King James translates everlasting life, New King James everlasting life, Young's literal life age during. Now in the last three verses we have seen the Greek words zoen, ionion. They've switched the King James and the New King James from everlasting life to eternal life 
and back to everlasting life again. I've stuck literally to the same translation for all three because it refers to the same thing. The reason why this word is so important is because it's the one that's used in Matthew 25, 46, which we'll come and look at and examine a little bit later. But for now, let's go on to another one. We'll look at the glory of God, which is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, may he perfect you, establish, strengthen, and ground you. Literally, the eternal of him glory. Tain Ionion Autu Doxan, accusative case. King James, his eternal glory. New King James, his eternal glory. Young's literal, his age during glory. So I've agreed with the New King James and the King James at this place. We'll take a look at the next one. We're looking now at things not seen. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Literally, eternal. Greek, Ionia, nominative case. King James translates eternal, New King James eternal, Young's literal, age during. If you want to know what things are not seen, they are the spiritual things. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it talks about faith, hope and love. Now, all of these things are obviously spiritual things. And in 1 John 4, verse 8 and verse 16, it says God is love. Well, if God is love, then love is eternal, isn't it? Now let's take a look at salvation. Hebrews 5, 9. And when he was perfected, he became the author of everlasting salvation to all those who obey him. Literally, salvation everlasting, soterias ionio in the Greek, genitive case. King James translates eternal salvation, New King James eternal salvation, Young's literal salvation age during. When I thought about this, I considered uh, to put everlasting because I don't believe salvation was ever existed before the fall. Right? People were always in the state of being with God. Adam and Eve were in, with God in the, in the Garden of Eden. And until you get lost, you don't need the salvation to be ministered to you, do you? I could be wrong about that if you consider salvation to be eternal um maybe you'd like to put a link in the comments because in hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 it tells you there that we get salvation when jesus christ returns so i don't look at it as being eternal i look at it as everlasting because once you get it you're not going to lose it hebrews 9 12 nor by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained everlasting redemption for us. Literally, everlasting redemption. Ionian Lacrosin, accusative case. King James translates eternal redemption, New King James eternal redemption, Young's literal age during redemption. There's a time when redemption begins. Jesus obtained, it says in this very verse, that he obtained it when he died because he paid for our sin to be forgiven. So basically, I believe it's everlasting when you get it, but I don't believe it's eternal. Let's look at comfort now. Go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. 
and our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God our Father, who loved us and has given us everlasting comfort and good hope by grace. Literally, comfort everlasting, paraclesin ionian, accusative case. King James translates everlasting consolation, New King James, Everlasting Consolation. Young's literal translates Comfort Age During. Whether you consider it to be, a, well, it is a consolation as well, and it's a comfort, isn't it? It's both. Now look at our habitation in the heavens. Go to Luke 16, verse 9. And I say to you, make for yourselves friends of the riches of unrighteousness that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Literally, everlasting tents. Ionius Scanus, accusative case. King James translates everlasting habitations. New King James, everlasting habitations. Young's literal age during tabernacles. Why everlasting? There is a scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 1, I think it is, where it talks about it, uh, a house eternal in the heavens. Looking at the, I believe it's referring to the new body that we get when we go up to be there. I don't think it could possibly be eternal because it would mean our house in the heavens had to exist before creation, before even the world began. But I believe in John 14, uh, Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for us, isn't he? So I've translated everlasting. Look at our inheritance now. This is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Because of this, he is the mediator of the new covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who were called could receive the promise of everlasting inheritance. Literally, everlasting inheritance, Ionius Cleronomius, genitive case. King James eternal inheritance, New King James eternal inheritance, Young's literal age during inheritance. I've translated everlasting again because I believe there's a time when it comes. The inheritance itself had to be purchased by Christ. Look at the covenant now, the new covenant. This is Hebrews 13.20. And the God of peace, who brought up the Lord Jesus from the dead, the shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Literally, covenant everlasting, diathekes, I own you, genitive case. King James translates Everlasting Covenant, New King James Everlasting Covenant, Young's Literal Age During Covenant. The covenant itself is everlasting as far as we're concerned because uh, you can see this in Hebrews 8.10 and Hebrews 10 verse 16. It's a covenant that enables you to be obedient to God. If you want to know how to do it, you'll have to re you'll have to follow the example of Jesus. In Psalm 40, verse 8, it says, I come to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. The covenant that was made with the people in the Old Testament, the law wasn't in the heart. They were told to put it in. But the covenant was made before they put it in. The new covenant is different. This time, the covenant is made by putting it in, uh, so you can keep it and be obedient, which they couldn't in the Old Testament. Now look at God's kingdom. Second Peter one eleven, For so an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Literally, everlasting kingdom, Ionian Basilian. Accusative case. King James translates everlasting kingdom. New King James everlasting kingdom. Young's literal age during reign. 
At the end of time, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus is going to present the kingdom back to his father. Uh, so it's going to be in existence right the way up to that point, and he's going to give it back to God. Let's look at section two now. This is long-lasting, age-lasting, age-long, or age-during. The first one we can look at is the fire. And we'll start with Matthew 18, verse 8. Therefore, if your hand or foot offends you, cut them off and cast them from you, for it is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into long-lasting fire. Literally, the fire of long-lasting. Ta, pur, ta, ionion, accusative case. King James translates everlasting fire, New King James everlasting fire, Young's literal, the fire, the age during. Now I've translated long-lasting fire here. Uh, because I have an understanding from other scriptures that uh, the fire will not last forever. But we'll see that. I'll show you some more scriptures to go with it. Matthew twenty-five forty-one. Then he shall also say to them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into long-lasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Literally, the fire of the long-lasting. Ta, pur, ta. Ionion, accusative case. King James translates everlasting fire. New King James everlasting fire. Young's literal, the fire age during. Now, if you look at this verse, it's in almost the same context we've got as Matthew twenty five forty six. So this is important. So let me show you a few scriptures where the everlasting fire didn't last everlasting. And start with Jude chapter 1 verse 7. As Sodom and Gomorrah and those cities around them in like manner, having given themselves to fornication and having gone after other flesh, are set before for an example undergoing the vengeance of long-lasting fire. Literally, fire long-lasting, poros ionium. Genitive case. The King James translates eternal fire. The New King James translates eternal fire. Young's literal translates fire age during. Now, how you understand this depends on how you see it. Is it physical or spiritual? Obviously, in the physical, the fire has gone out. It has ended. It burned for a while, and then it just went out by itself. If you think that it refers to spiritually the fire of Gehenna, then you could have a different understanding to it. But I've gone with long lasting. I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. Mark 9.43 And if your hand should offend you, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life main than having two hands to go away into Gehenna into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not being quenched. Now some translations say, the fire that shall never be quenched. That is not what it says in the Greek. I would encourage you to look it up. Does die. Taluta is the word in Greek. It is the Strong's 5053. It occurs 12 times in the King James and it's always translated in association with death in some way. Although the actual word means to come to an end. So you can see the association from the natural meaning. Now the, the verses which follow verse 49 to 48, they're saying similar kinds of things. So I'm not going to read those to you, but they're using the same kind of words all the way through. The fire is not being quenched, we read. It doesn't say it's never be quenched. I think some Bibles say shall not be quenched. Uh, it's actually a present 
tense in the Greek, a present passive indicative, if you want the technical expression for it, uh, which to me doesn't mean future tense, although in some cases you can employ it. I want to show you two scriptures now, but we're going to put them together and look at them. And the first one is going to be Jeremiah 7 verse 20. Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. So this says God's anger is going to burn and not be quenched. Now, go to this next scripture and see what it says there. Micah 7.18 Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. Now the one says his anger is going to burn and not be quenched forever. The next one says he doesn't keep his anger forever. I think you can see by this if you're going to take his word, his anger, he does not retain his anger forever, then it's obviously, it's going to burn and not be quenched, doesn't mean it's never going to end. So when in the previous scripture we saw that the fire is not being quenched, that doesn't mean it won't come to an end, does it? Uh, put the scriptures together and you can see it. I'll give you another couple of examples. Go to Jeremiah 17 verse 27. But if you will not listen to me to sanctify the Sabbath day and not to bear a burden, even entering the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem and shall not be quenched. Jeremiah 39, 8. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house. That's the palaces of Jerusalem and the houses of the people with fire, and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Now let me ask you the question, it said it's not be quenched, is it still burning? The answer is no, it's not. This idea of something not being quenched means it's not going to be put out. But when it's burned up everything it needs to burn, it, it goes out by itself. And I believe you can apply the same thing to the lake of fire Gehenna where it says the fire is not being quenched. Let's look now at judgment and condemnation. Mark 3.29 But whoever shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit has no forgiveness for the age, but is subject to long-lasting judgment. Literally, long-lasting judgment. I own you, Chryseos. Genitive case. Eternal damnation is King James translation. Eternal condemnation is New King James. Young's literal translates age during judgment. Again here it all depends on how far you think the judgment will last on the people. Eternal damnation, that's the King James translation which suggests never ending ire. I believe this is why the King James did it, because they believed it. Maybe they did believe it. But if you go to other scriptures, you can prove it different. Go now to Hebrews 6, 2, and let's look at another one. Of the teaching of baptisms, and laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of long-lasting judgment, literally, long-lasting judgment, Krematos, I own you, genitive case. King James translates eternal judgment. New King James, eternal judgment. Young's literal translates judgment age during. Okay, let's go on now and let's have a look at another kind of translation. I've titled this ruin, but other Bibles sometimes translate it destruction. Destruction has a connotation of ceasing, ceasing to exist, basically. 
which I don't like because I don't think that's what it's going to do. Second Thessalonians 1 9. You shall suffer judgment, long lasting ruin, from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength. Literally, ruin long lasting, olethron, ionion, accusative case. King James translates everlasting destruction. New King James everlasting destruction. Young's literal destruction age during. Alethron comes from the word alumi, uh, which doesn't occur in the New Testament, uh, but it has a meaning of destroy or ruin something. Basically, that's where it comes from. It's like Apollumi, discussed in a previous video, Strong's number 622, if you want to look it up. Uh, it doesn't mean, I, I think I proved it fairly convincingly in that video, it does not mean cease to exist. Go to Revelation 14.6 and we'll have a look at what they call the everlasting gospel. And I saw another angel flying in the mid-heaven, having the age-lasting gospel, to preach to those who dwell on the earth, even every nation and tribe and tongue and people. Literally, gospel, age lasting, euangelion, ionion, accusative case. King James translates everlasting gospel, New King James everlasting gospel, Young's literal, good news, age during. Now I've translated here age-lasting gospel and I'm referring to the age that is mentioned in Ephesians 3.21. To him belongs the glory in the church in Christ Jesus for all the generations of the age of the ages. Amen. The age of the ages. I discussed this in another video. It looks like there is one age, a big one, which includes lots of smaller ages. And this is what it's referring to. Because if you believe, as I do, that people will be saved in the lake of fire and be took out, then they've got to have the gospel. They've got to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Because Jesus said it himself. He's the only way to God. The fire that they're going to go through may be exactly similar to the fiery trials we have to go through in this life. Maybe worse. But I think they're going to suffer something. So let's move on to the last section now. This is part four. Past or future times. Romans 16.25 now to him who is in power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret in past times. Literally, in times age lasting. Chronois, Ionios, dative case. The King James translates since the world began. The New King James since the world began. Young's literal in the times of the ages. The mystery referred to here, which was kept secret in past times, was obviously salvation. This is what it's talking about. Uh, so to me, past times, that tells you that there is a time when the beginning time actually begins. Time is not eternal. Eternal is outside of time. There was a time when time started, and that would be in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, so past times, I think, covers it uh, to say that it wasn't revealed up until the time when it was given to the apostles and Jesus Christ to reveal it. 2 Timothy 1, nine, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before age-lasting times. Again, you've got this word times here. Age-lasting times. 
it was given to us before age lasting times in other words really before the world began that's when it was given to us literally before times age lasting thra chronon ionion genitive case king james translates before the world began new king james before time began young's literal before the times of the ages well yeah i could go along with the new king james here before time began or the king james before the world began because that's when i believe it started titus 1 2 in hope of eternal life which god who does not lie promised before age lasting times literally before times age lasting chronon ionion genitive case king james translates before the world began new king james before time began young's literal before times of ages so that's exactly the same as the previous verse we read in second timothy 1 9 isn't it same words philemon 1 15 perhaps he was separated for an hour for this that you might have him for life literally for life ionion accusative case king james translates forever new king james forever young's literal age duringly this is talking about onesimus uh, he was a runaway slave that met up with the apostle paul paul converted him he became a christian and he sent him back to his master philemon and he said he would be profitable to him for life or forever i think life is the correct word here because this is as long a period of time as it will allow this is what the actual word means here uh, that's how we described it if he died or philemon died then it would not be profitable to him anymore would he not in a natural sense anyway and if they went into the kingdom who knows maybe onesimus would be higher up in the kingdom than that philemon so he wouldn't be profitable to him there would he so let's draw a conclusion from all this let's go and look at matthew 25 verse 46 this is what we started with and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal the word translated punishment here is the accusative case it's the feminine noun colossus strong's number is 2851 if you want to look it up and occurs only in one other place and that's in first john 418 where it's translated torment there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment he who fears has not been perfected in love now the word zoe here which we saw was uh, to do with eternal life uh, this has already been discussed earlier strong's number 2222 two, 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 if you want to look it up but the punishment this is the one we got to look at is this eternal or is it not this is my translation of it matthew 25 46 these shall go away into long-lasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal literally punishment long-lasting colossin ionion accusative case king james everlasting punishment new king james everlasting punishment young's literal punishment age during the word ionios used in this place which i've translated long lasting and the king james and new king james translate everlasting the meaning of it in this place depends on the word it is used with uh, the word for punishment which is colossus and the problem here is you can't get it from just this one passage you've got to look at a vast number of other scriptures and find out how long the punishment lasts from them now i've already done four videos on this 
And if you're not believing what I'm telling you, I'll advise you to go and have a look. The first one is prophecies of ultimate universal salvation. The second one is God's character versus eternal punishment. The third one is who did Jesus die for? And the fourth one is part one of this video, studying the word I own, the noun from which Ionios comes. I will link them in the description to this video. So that's it. I don't think there's much I can add to that except to say, if you're not sure about these, please, please study it out. Don't speak evil of God and say he's merciless. He's, he's never going to let people out of the lake of fire because that is not the nature of the God I know. And I hope you get the same view. Uh, because otherwise, if we don't know God, remember what it says in uh, John 17, 3. This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. We need to know. I hope you've learned something from this video. And if you have, please give God all the glory. Thank you for watching it all the way through. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Click center to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click top to see more videos. Go also to our website and see some great Bible studies, Hebrew and Greek word studies, and lots more. And God bless you.